world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. I will open today to the Gospel of John, chapter 4. Then cometh a woman to Samaria to draw water. Jesus says unto her, Give me drink. We stand by a water course between us on our right and our left. As the Lord Jesus Christ sits, a woman comes about to do her daily business. Before there was hot and, hot and cold running water in the house, she grabs her bucket, heads off to the community well, to the community place, such as a place like this, to do her business. Not getting water, but here you get fruits and vegetables. And as your way to the fruits and vegetables, you come across Jesus sitting. We bring to you Jesus in the Word, for the Word says that Jesus Christ is the Word. So as you go about your daily business, we will bring to you the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like John chapter 4. Why are you doing this? And we're doing what the Bible tells us to do. We're doing what Jesus is doing. Here is a place that people went daily. Here is a place that people go weekly. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. The disciples have gone off to the farmer's market. While Jesus is sitting on the well. The disciples are going off to get hamburgers. They're going off to the grocery store. But Jesus awaits this woman to come. There are brethren out there not right now working who cannot come here. But we are in their prayers for this ministry. They're doing other things of life. To realize that people are praying for us of our church and our brethren worldwide as we go about this ministry. You may not like us here, but I'm telling you that brethren of the Lord Jesus Christ, saved by the grace of God, enjoy that we are out here for you. Then saith the woman of Samaria to him, How is it that thou being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. I'm here to tell you that I am not prejudiced against any people. Hey, can I ask you a question? Yes. In Mark 4, they talk about the legend, demon and fella got yeah. in. In Mark 14, a fella runs away when he's arresting Jesus. A fella run away and they ripped his clothes off of him. In Mark 16, there was a human being sitting in the tomb when Mary came in there. Are all three of those guys the same person? No. What's, are they different? Every one of them different? Every one of them. Every one of them's different. One guy was it, uh, was it, uh... Full of demons. Didn't well, the one that had his clothes pulled off, he wasn't full of demons. No, That's the same with that. They said, he just yeah, flew with the clothes. Yeah, but the first guy, see, God, or Jesus, uh, cured him. Yes. And then the second guy, he was a follower of Jesus. Yes. And that guy, the first guy, wanted to be a follower of Jesus. But he told him to go home and, and tell his people at home. Is there a difference between the Son of God and the Son of Man? Jesus is both. He was born of Mary while being of, of God. So we can call him the Son of God or the Son of Man? Is, uh, yeah, he's 100% God, 100% man. Hang in there. All right, thank you. I'm here to tell you that we're not here, we're, we're not prejudiced of anybody. Jesus Christ is not prejudiced of anybody. Whether race, creed, sex, age, Jesus Christ is open to all, and even including, if you think, because you're a, a homosexual, Jesus Christ can meet with you also and deal with your sin. This woman was an outcast of the Jews, and she says to Jesus, What are you doing talking to me? Yet to know whoever and whatever you are, I am not ashamed and will not be ashamed to open up the Bible with you and talk to you. Because all have sinned. All have come.
come to show the glory of God. I don't care what your sin is. Sin is sin. There is no, there is no one that Jesus Christ cannot talk to. And we will deal with you. We will deal with the Bible with you with your sin. Now you want to come to us with your condition and explain what your condition is. I will tell you what your condition is and we'll deal from that. We'll deal from sin. It's a sin issue. Now if you want to come and defend your sin, there's nothing that Jesus can do for you. We're not here for defense. We're here to repent. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ talks to this woman that's an outcast and says, I am the gift of God. The first opening sentence that he has for this woman is, I am the gift of God. And in Romans 6.23, it says that gift of God's eternal life, which is Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you if you want eternal life, you want to live forever, you can't do it by religion. You've got to receive the gift of God, which is... Jesus Christ. And who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink. Thou wouldst have asked him, and he would have given thee living water. Now Jesus didn't say, Let's go to a program. Let's go through a three step program. Let's join this organization. Let's join this church. Let's hop in the water. Let's do this. He says, if you were to ask for the water of life, all you got to do to be saved is to ask and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, for with the heart man believes on the righteousness. You come to Jesus with your heart. You come to Jesus with your sins. And you will walk away saved, a child of God with the Holy Spirit indwelling with you by the faith and belief that Jesus Christ is the only sin offering that God will receive. Without the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, I don't care what you have done. I don't care where you have gone. I don't care of whom you have done it. You are not saved. <clears throat> the woman says unto him, Sir, respect. That's lacking in American women today. Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. And the well is deep. From hence, then hast thou the living water? That's a great question. But she has eluded the fact about the living water. It's a skews. It's, well, yeah, I want living water, but what about the ark? How many animals did, I, did Noah have in the ark? Who cares? Lord, you can save me, but tell me how you're going to do it. Faith. The merit that Jesus Christ died on the cross was buried. <coughs> and arose again the third day according to scriptures. That's the faith. That's the work of Jesus Christ. He need not explain it to you. You need not to know how many hours Jesus was on that cross. You need not to know how many pints of blood. You need not to know. You just need to know what He has done for you. You don't need to get into a big doctoral theology lesson on salvation. Salvation is simple. A, B, C, kindergarten. Our 
not thou greater than our father Jacob? Oh, you better believe he's greater than Jacob. He's the one that made Jacob. He's the one that made Abraham. He's the one that spoke to Abraham, the I Am, the Creator. Without Jesus Christ, there would have been no Jacob. Without Jesus Christ, there would be none of you. Without Jesus Christ, you would have no fruits and vegetables and popcorns and other noxious stuff to be sold in Vanity Fair. You may think that you are a product of evolution, but evolution needs a God. Where did the spark come from? You're going to have just as much faith. You're just going to have enough faith to believe in evolution as much as you got to believe in, in the beginning God created. You are talking about the God of all creation in the Bible. He is greater than you. He is greater than your church. He is greater than your religious leader. He is greater above all. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the great I Am. He is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. He is the only one that can save America. He is the only one that can save you. He's the only one that can save your marriage. He's the only one that can save your church. He is the greatest of all great. And His name is Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ to you, as she said, Sir. Respect. He is not your, your main man, Jesus. He ain't the man upstairs. He ain't Jesus Christ in a curse. He is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of all mankind. Yet, yet, many will go the broad way. You better treat Jesus Christ with respect because you will face Him at one of two judgments in your lifetime. And I hope it is the judgment seat of Christ. Even if you stand at the great white throne judgment, you will call him sir. And you will call him Lord Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every knee shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Do it now while you've got your breath. Don't do it at your condemnation, your damnation, as he's casting you off into hell. He is greater than Jacob. He is greater than the Jews. He is the Creator. Which gave us the well. Well, Jacob <coughs> may have given that well. Jacob may have even dug that well. That's all well. That's all fine. But do you know who made that dirt? Do you know who made the water in that well? You cannot be a Christian and believe in evolution, even theistic evolution. Because you've got to come to the fact for salvation that Jesus is God and God is Jesus and it is not a big bang. I call to question if you confess to be a Christian and believe in Big Daddy, here we are from apes. Because that is not Bible. Another the fact is that God made it and left it to go do whatever it wanted to do while he went in the lounge hall. It is all upon God. This guy's happy for Jesus. He's tooting for Jesus. Amen. He didn't even know he was doing it for Jesus, but he's doing it for Jesus. Praise the Lord. You've got to have a creator God as your salvation. You cannot believe in evolution and be saved. Man dug that well, but God created everything for that well, including the shovel. And drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Well, that well goes back a long, long, long way. Maybe we got some old cow poop that we can 
an honor too. We can put it in the museum. Here's Jacob's cattle pooped by the whale. We can have a great museum of religion. Or we can have a great religion. A religion that my parents were in. My grandparents were in. My great grandparents were in. My great great grandparents were in this church. And we're going to die in this church. And we're going to sell this church. And this church may bring you to hell. Because if this woman was not saved, Jesus would not have been dealing with her. The fact that Jesus is dealing with this woman and she's of the ancestry of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the people of God, of all the people of God, of all the nations of God, this woman being of Jacob, and Jesus is going to talk to her about salvation. Don't tell me what family you are. Don't tell me how much money you are. Don't tell me anything of who you are. You are still dying and going to hell without Jesus and his blood, according to this woman. In John chapter 4, if there's anybody that should go to heaven, it's the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I didn't say Ishmael. And yet this woman, being of the seed of the children of God, Jesus Christ is dealing with her soul. It's not who you are. It's not what you are. It is the question, what will you do with Jesus? That's the question. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Holy water will just get you wet, but it won't survive. Drinking the Lord's blood, literally the Lord's blood, will just get that little quench of thirst and you'll be thirsty for it. Religion that comes in a cup and drink is not going to satisfy. Them drinks will not give you the fruit of the Spirit. I'll tell you what religion will. Religion will give you fruit of the looms. And some religions take that literally with their underwear. Religion is the means to satisfy now, but it will not satisfy in eternity. You can drink of religion, you can be religionist, you can go to church, you can read your Bible, and yet still end up in hell. Just because you go to church doesn't mean that God is going to accept you into his heaven. Just because you give up your money. I'm sorry, there are no 1040 forms in heaven. Just because of who you think and what you think you are, that is not a ticket into the entrance into heaven. You, again, have got to do what God has prescribed for salvation and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ is the only means of that salvation and anything else is religion, anything else is a lie, anything else is of Satan. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus said that this water you're coming to, you're going to have to come back tomorrow. You're going to have to come back tomorrow. You're going to have to come back the next day. You're going to have to come back next week. And that's what a service of that big church. Come every day and receive Christ. And get no satisfaction of where you're going to go when you die. Yet the Bible said, these things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. Listen, I know when I depart from this flesh, I'm going to be absent from this body and present with the Lord. Do you have that assurance? Do you know where you're going to die? If your religious leader cannot give you that answer, he is a liar and does not know the Bible and needs to be thrown down from the pulpit 
you. It's satisfying. The water that Jesus offers you is replenishing. The water that Jesus offers you is eternal. And I ain't talking about H2O. I'm talking about J-E-S-U-S. <clears throat> but whosoever shall drink of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well springing up unto everlasting life. This ain't no bottled water. This ain't no water you can get at the convenience store. This is the heavenly water. This is the water of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, offering it to you. Salvation. Before He has died on the cross, He is not offering His blood. He is offering water. And she's not going to be baptized in it. He doesn't dunk her in this well. That's not in the book. Now maybe your church has him dunking her, but it ain't no dunking. There is no dunking in this chapter. There is the water that is life, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not what you are, it's who you are in Christ. I am a born-again Christian by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We read on. The woman says unto him, Sir, give me this water. Now I thirst no more. Well, I thirst not, excuse me. Neither come hither to draw. This woman is much smarter than you Americans. I have offered you a free gift of eternal drink of the Lord Jesus Christ, and none of you have come. And this woman says, give me, give me, give me. Yet, yeah, if I had a table here with free beer, you'd come running with your tongues hanging out like a dog. If I had hamburgers here free, you'd be coming over here desiring to get three or four. And yet I offer to you the water of life free, and you stand there like dumb animals. Duh. Duh. And you don't even realize what I'm offering to you. What I'm offering to you is when you close your eyes to death, and you'll enjoy all eternity. What I'm offering to you is a life insurance. 